All right, so today we're gonna be making um, adobong manok, which is chicken adobo from the Filipino Instant Pot Cookbook. And uh, chicken adobo is the cl a classic Filipino dish. Um, you know, historians say that adobo is an indigenous food uh, that was first created pre-colonial times but in order to preserve food uh, through the use of an acid like vinegar um, and salt and other spices. Um, as other cultural influences came to the Philippines, such as the Chinese influence, um, soy sauce was added, and then it was the Spanish who first coined, gave the name adobo, but the original Filipino name is probably uh, kinilaw, uh, which is related to the method of preserving food with vinegar. And I'm Jeannie, and this is Art. I'm Art, hi. Two of the authors, and we want to thank our other authors, Tisha, Jarrell, um, Romeo, and Jamar, who couldn't be with us today. So um, the library has the eight quart handy dandy instant pot, which is a lot more uh, advanced than the one we grew up on or the one that we uh, wrote the book for. Um, we use the six quart at home. Yeah, so, this one is fancy. I mean, like, <laughs> check this out. Look at this dial. Like, we don't have a dial on ours. <laughs> and then this has handles, so you don't burn your hands when you lift it up. This is amazing. Yeah, so you can borrow this at the library, which is great. Um, Take care of it, though. <laughs> yes. Return it nicer than you found it, right? So, um, yeah, and what I usually do, and we'll just turn the page, what page is it on? I, I have my handy dandy um, clip, binder clip, which I use to keep it open. Um, and this is a recipe from one of our authors, Romeo. It's his family recipe for adobo. And I, I would like to read you his intro to, to the recipe. And Romeo writes, you're driving home from work with an exact idea of what the evening is going to be like. Time portioned out for every activity, dinner, play with kids, watch TV, exercise, then get ready for bed. You get home, walk into the kitchen, and oh my gosh, you realize you forgot to defrost the chicken. And it's okay, your evening isn't ruined. This recipe using frozen chicken is useful when you need to stay on schedule. The classic adobo flavors are still infused into the chicken and you can breathe easy and be guilt-free. Uh, thank you, Romeo, for that introduction. So you can make this dish from frozen chicken or thawed. You would just have to change the cooking time. Um, you know, our book, this book, if you borrow it from the library or buy it for your own a home is um, designed for the six quart instant pot. Um, and if you want to borrow the pot from the library, this is an eight quart. So you will just have to research online to uh, change uh, the amounts of the ingredients to accommodate the pot. Um, though instant pot official website says you don't need to change the cooking time, just the ingredient amounts. Did you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, so for this particular recipe, what we did is we just increased the um, amounts from the book because our book was written for six quart. Um, we increased it to eight quart, so uh, we'll just tell you what the new amounts are. Uh, the calculation basically is you just multiply what you got here times one and a third, and you know, it's, it isn't fun, right? <laughs> But, but, but we figured it out. Um, quick tip about adobo. Um, as long as you don't get a burn signal on this thing and as long as you don't add water, there's all kinds of adobo recipes and different flavor profiles where people put more soy sauce or more vinegar. And sometimes people even put like sugar in it. So um, you're not gonna mess up the adobo if you're a little sloppy on some of these things where it's not perfect. It's still gonna taste great. It's still gonna taste like adobo. And make sure you have plenty of rice because adobo is not a um, kind of like food that you eat on its own because it has so much flavor. So with, with as long as you have rice and you, you use soy sauce and vinegar and chicken, it'll, it'll come out pretty good. So you're gonna be okay. <laughs> 
We also have a recipe in the book, which is um, coconut uh, milk with the vinegar. And so that's another liquid you could add because for the Instant Pot, for the eight quart, you, you need a minimum amount of uh, two cups of water. For the six quart, you need a minimum amount of one cup of water or, or liquid, in this case, the vinegar and soy sauce. Okay, so the first step is to saute uh, the aromatic. So I'm gonna press saute and then oh, just pour this in really quick. hold the bottom. All right, perfect. Okay, so it, sh it should be going on saute. Okay, so that was, um, in the book it says two tablespoons of cooking oil converted to the size it is now. Um, two teaspoons of cooking oil, which is, um, Surprisingly more than, wait, my bad. No. Oh my goodness, <laughs> four teaspoons of cooking oil is, is, is what two tablespoons plus a third is. Okay. We're awesome, this is awesome. <laughs> Okay, should we just start all over? No, nah, go. Cool. Okay. That's cool. All right, so um, this is going to be sauteing, and we're going to add the garlic. Okay, so this is going to be 12 cloves of garlic for a six quart. It's going to be uh, 16 cloves of garlic for um, eight quart. 16 cloves of garlic. All right. Really good for kissing later. <laughs> Only people in your COVID pod, though. Yeah, yeah, with masks on. <laughs> okay, so I added the garlic. Um, and that's gonna be sauteing. Okay. So after the, the garlic is... Um, golden. Golden. We're gonna go ahead and add the chicken. And our recipe calls for two pounds of chicken in the book. But if you're gonna adapt it to the eight quart machine. Just throw in another thigh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm adding, this is thawed chicken, um, but you can uh, put it in frozen. Yeah, which is great because the pressure cooking is gonna um, bring it's gonna thaw the chicken for you, and then it'll just sort of end up the same. So, um, what's the cooking time for frozen versus thawed? Is 17 minutes if your chicken is frozen, and 10 minutes if it is thawed. All right. Okay, so, um, do you think it's cooking? It's not making much noise, okay. It hasn't heated up yet, that's all right, we're just-, just Okay, and then we're gonna add some soy sauce. Um, our recipe calls for three quarter cups of light soy sauce, um, but you can use regular soy sauce. We understand that you know it's a sheltering in place world, so we very much encourage folks to just cook whatever you have in your cupboard. Um, <laughs> and a Filipino rule of thumb: if it's a little salty, just eat it with more rice. <laughs> Um, so the reason why the, this is using um, light soy sauce instead of regular is because uh, Romeo includes but this, but this is also salty. So he's got a he's, he's got some put this in there. So if you're going to use um, regular soy sauce, just just be aware that when you throw that put this in, it is going to be a little saltier. So um, you might want to reduce the amount of regular soy sauce, maybe by just 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 don't dump in the whole thing, just do like 80% of what you were gonna do. Yeah, patisse is fermented uh, anchovy sauce, but you can omit the uh, patisse or anchovy sauce if you're using regular soy sauce. It just adds a little bit more of uh, umami flavor. That's good. <laughs> and then, um, the vinegars. Uh, this our recipe is unique in that it calls for apple cider vinegar and white vinegar, equal parts. So we converted um, for six quarts. It's going to be one third of a cup per uh, vinegar. Um, for eight quarts, it's going to be one third of a cup plus an extra two tablespoons of vinegar of that type. So the two types of vinegar we're using are apple cider vinegar and white vinegar. And um, Romeo's recipe calls for one tablespoon of ground black pepper. Um, I, 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 you can adapt that to your spice 
preference. Um, I, I'm only putting in one teaspoon of the black pepper here. Um, and then four bay leaves. These are bay leaves from our, our garden in Vallejo. Um, and these are California bay leaves, but you can use whatever you have in your cupboard. Um, so for six quarts, we say four bay leaves. For eight quarts, just make it five bay leaves. Yeah. So I think that's about it. This is a very yeah, simple recipe. Yeah, you can almost um, just do this as you sleepwalk. It's simple. Just... <laughs> All right. Now we're going to cover it. Is okay. that right? Are we, are, are we down there? And just make sure that the sauce is coating uh, the chicken. You can also use uh, chicken on the bone or chicken with skin on. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about the... Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, this lid, very, very important. The most important thing to do when you are doing your Instant Pot is to make sure that you remember to have this white sealing ring. It might turn brown after many years of use, but in the beginning, it's going to be white. <laughs> um, and it's got to be pushed in all the way around. And if you don't do that, then your, your pot's never going to come to pressure and then steam's just going to leak out of it like continually. So that's usually my biggest mistake with this thing is like sometimes I just forget to put the ring. And then once you put it in there, you drop it in and you give it a twist and it makes this cool sound that tells you everything's fine. And then you make sure that the setting on top is set to seal and not vent so that it can come to pressure. If you put it on, on vent, then it's just gonna leak steam forever and you'll never come to pressure. Yeah. So. All right, and then what do we put it on? How many minutes, 10? So yes, 10 minutes, because the chicken has been thawed at high pressure. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I. Yeah, so for the purposes of this video, we just kind of go in sort of I, fast, make sure that, you know, like you sauteed it to how you want it. And then when you're done, you're gonna press cancel yep. in order to stop the saute. And then we're going to go ahead and press pressure cook and set it to 10 minutes. And then start. Woohoo! And I'm just gonna turn off keep warm. Yeah, so at this point, um, the pot's gonna heat up, everything's gonna boil. Everything's sealed, the boiling will become pressure, and then as soon as it hits the right amount of pressure, this on is gonna change to the time that you set, which is 10 minutes or 17 minutes, depending if you're frozen or not. And then it's just gonna count down to zero, and then when it's zero, um, the cooking's done, and then you're gonna have to let it depressurize. So what is the depressurization steps for this? For this recipe, um, when cooking is complete, allow the pressure to release naturally for five minutes and then quick release the remaining pressure. So um, just part of the basics of the Instant Pot, it uses steam to cook food. And so as steam is building up, that takes time. So depending on how much liquid you have in your pot, will determine how much time it takes to build up pressure. This only has roughly two cups of liquid, so it may take about 10 minutes to uh, come to pressure, and then it'll cook for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna let it uh, depressurize, depressurize, and let it uh, depressurize, depressurize naturally for five minutes. So the total cooking time will be approximately 25 to 30 minutes. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're starting to use the Instant Pot, that there will be a little time at the beginning and the end uh, to build up the steam and to release steam. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. And then uh, natural pressure release means just leave it alone for five minutes and then it will just kind of naturally cool itself down a little bit and then you release the steam, make sure that you know, you're kind of standing back like this. You're not going like this when you do it. <laughs> and uh, you'll be good. Yes, and you know, it's, this is a nice little cart here. Um, if you have a, a kitchen island or mise en place at home, you wanna make sure that the steam vent is not over your cupboards because it can warp or your- Or under your cupboards. Yeah, if it's not under your cupboards, then, um, so that it, the steam will not warp your uh, cabinetry. Um, 
so yeah, we'll just wait uh, for the machine to come to pressure, and um, we'll uh, let you. We'll show you how it ends up. I'm holding a spatula in my hand because I'm going to be releasing the pressure. The um, 10 minutes that we set it for is finished. So five minutes has also passed. The five minutes for it to kind of um, just cool down a little bit on its own. And so we're gonna release the pressure now. Um, the valve is on the other side of where the steam's gonna come out. So I actually don't wanna stand on this side because then I'm gonna end up going like this and the steam's gonna be over here. So it's always better to stand on the side where the steam is away from you. So I'm on this side, the same side as the valve, and I'll just kind of flip it with like that. And there you go. So you obviously you wanna wait until all this is done before you take off, like do any kind of twisting. Just, and you're, you're gonna see the, um, uh, pressure valve indicator thingy. It's like a piece of metal that's gonna fall in. When it falls in, that means that the pressure is completely um, gone. Like there's, it's not under pressure anymore. So that's what you're actually waiting for. And for our uh, dishes like soups, where there's a lot of liquid, so a lot of steam has built up, it may take several minutes to depressurize. So you can wait till the steam uh, is no longer visible. You can also jiggle the top and um, it will unlock automatically when um, there, this steam is fully released. Yeah, there it goes. So the little thing fell in and now you can just, just open it. And there is a way to hold, the, the, there is slots on the rim that are actually for holding the lid. Many people don't know that. <laughs> awesome. Well, look so. at that, look, it looks awesome. Oh, it'll taste better tomorrow. You know, I like, to eat sometimes. <laughs> like, like all Filipino food does except maybe pancit. Yeah, the longer that the proteins or the, the food marinates in the sauce, the more it absorbs the flavor. And for those who are having a low carb uh, lifestyle, you can, like us in fact, you can eat adobo with greens. And so we've brought the adobo with uh, some brown rice for those who eat rice and broccoli and cauliflower for those who are trying to uh, participate in low carb lifestyle. And if you're vegan, you can have um, adobo with the cauliflower adobo recipe that we have in the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, for vegans, you would substitute, uh, of course, things like patis. Uh, if you're trying to do gluten-free, you can use cocoa aminos. Um, in the back of our book, there are there's an index that uh, helps folks who are like keto or vegan, vegetarian, nut-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, et cetera. So it, it, there's a ha this helpful index for if you wanna find different recipes according to your dietary needs. Um, and we're just gonna plate this with some brown rice. We have a really easy recipe for brown rice in our book, which is essentially um, like for the six quart machine, two cups of brown rice, two and a half cups of water, a couple tablespoons of butter, and that's it. And it's a really delicious, easy to make brown rice. Um, do, you do, do you use the pressure setting or the rice setting? You know, you can just use a pressure setting the way we have it in our book. Um, and then just spoon a little bit of the sauce on top of your rice. Um, you can also serve it with uh, veggies of your choice, and you can also uh, put sauce on your veggies as well. And this is what it would look like. Uh, chicken adobo with brown rice and a side of veggies. Enjoy. <laughs> All right.
thank you so much for uh, bearing with us as we navigated a couple of um, technical issues, but um, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. Thank you, Jeannie and Art. You, you both are just wonderful presenters. Um, and I want to go home right now and make that myself. So um, we already have lots of comments um, from our audience thanking you. Um, Dan and I have a couple of questions that we can get us started with, but of course we invite um, also our attendees to submit questions in the chat box and also um, attendees, you should see a Q&A as well option where you can submit questions. Uh, Dan and I would be happy to read those questions out loud. So um, I can get us started with a question that we've prepared. Um, question to you, how did you get six authors connected to uh, write this book? Um, yeah, I can take that question. You know, the Filipino community is large, but the degrees of separation is very small. <laughs> um, I, I, I um, grew up with Romeo in Vallejo, California. So one of our authors, Romeo, and then I met Tisha and um, her husband, Jarrell, um, at UCLA. They, they, they met at UCLA and I, I went to Cal Berkeley, yay! But um, we, my friends and I would take road trips to SoCal, and so I, I, I met them in college. And then Romeo and Jamar um, are, are, are one of you know best buddies, and of course, Art's my husband. So that's how we we're all connected. But the joke is that uh, in writing the book, it was all remote, so we were working remotely long before the pandemic. And uh, some people hadn't ever met in real life before until about about the month of the actual book launch we met uh in real life in 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 oakland california and that's when uh, we actually were face to face but most of the book was written all of the book was written remotely wow thank you right. um why don't we go to a question from the audience if someone has one um was there one in the Q and A's, Heather? Um, I haven't received any questions quite okay, yet there. in the Q and A. Okay. Yeah. There were a couple questions that I already answered in the uh, Q and A. Okay. So thank okay. you, Aparna. I'm so glad that your teenage daughter is cooking with you. We love hearing uh, intergenerational cooking um, from folks with their kids and folks with their grandparents. Um, one of my friends uh, texted me a photo cooking with her 98 year old grandmother. And so that was so awesome. Um, Aparna was asking about the recipe. So I did pop the ingredients into the chat. And this, um, there's a link that is in the Q&A and I'm not sure if it's visible to all, but um, from San Jose Mercury News who covered our story and, and the full recipe is there for frozen or thawed chicken. And the cooking time for frozen was asked by Perry. It's 17 minutes for frozen chicken and 10 minutes for a thawed, both at high pressure. Okay. Great, thanks. Yeah. And so the Filipino Instant Pot Facebook community is at 83,000 people and counting. Um, how many of you in the audience are members? If you just want to raise your hand, we can kind of see. And while we're looking, oh, wow. <laughs> At least eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that group get started? Like who is the founder of the group? Yeah, um, do you want me to answer that? It was, it was Tisha and Jarrell who are our co-authors. Okay. Um, yeah, like that group was really what made us realize how much of a demand there potentially could be and gave us um, the confidence to go for it. Yeah, um, Tisha and Jarrell started using the Instant Pot in their home. The Instant Pot, the actual machine itself belonged to Tisha's mom. And like many of us, it kind of sits in your house for a while and you're kind of afraid to touch it. You don't know how to get started mm -hmm. and your life is busy and kind of hard to find time to learn a new tool. So they had it um, collecting dust in their home for a few months. 
until they finally uh, made some, I think it was honey garlic ribs, short ribs that really sold them on the power of the Instant Pot. And from there, they started scouring the internet for recipes and joining groups. They had a hard time finding Filipino recipes for the Instant Pot, as did we and our other authors. And so that's when they thought of starting the Facebook group, mostly for friends, and it just kind of grew exponentially from there. Um, now it's almost 86,000 from around the world. And so it's so fun to be connected with so many Filipino food enthusiasts and pressure cooking enthusiasts. Welcome to all the group members who joined us today. <laughs> um, so we have some questions in the chat and it looks like there's a couple Q and A's. Um, I'll start with uh, George asks how to cook chicken and rice and veggies at the same time, Question, like if possible. Like for example, are there additional containers that you would insert into the pot? I, I've been experimenting with that. It's called either pot and pot where um, you cook like something on the bottom and then you use another container or vessel and you cook, uh, you kind of layer. Um, you just have to be careful about the cooking time and, and things that can get overcooked. Mm -hmm. So um, like the other day, oh, I love doing it with boiled eggs because oh, yeah. it's so That's fun cool. making boiled eggs in the Instant Pot because I never get it right in a regular pot. But um, what did I do recently? Um, anyway, there's this thing called longanisa, which is Filipino sausage. And so mm -hmm. I put like some longanisa in a foil mm -hmm. on the uh, steaming rack that comes with the pot. Um, it, you get a few tools when you buy the box. Um, so I just put the longanisa in a tin foil, in an aluminum foil. And to the side, I actually just, I think I just put the eggs in also in a foil and put it for like three minutes at high pressure and then both were cooked. I like my boiled eggs. Um, there's a five, five, five rule, but I actually like them less cooked. So I usually do three minutes, um, three, a three minute under high pressure for the boiled eggs, uh, let it depressurize for a couple minutes and then so, uh, put it in a cold water bath. Um, so people are doing what's called pot and pot or layering their foods um, and it's all over the internet. So feel free to explore and experiment. It's quite fun. Just um, as she said in the beginning, be, be kind of um, just mindful that, you know, common sense, certain things are going to take longer to cook and certain things are going to cook really fast. So the biggest disadvantage of doing that, if you're not mindful of that, is that you're going to have food just like the, the, some texture could be wildly overcooked, you know? So the one of the ways to get around that when you really start nerding out on the Instant Pot um, is when you're like, okay, the chicken's gonna take me 12 minutes to cook and this asparagus is gonna take me three minutes to cook. So then I'm gonna do this for 17 minutes and then I'm gonna open it up and then I'll put the asparagus in and then I'll close it again, like that kind of stuff, right? You know, and then, and then you start to um, adapt it. At a certain point, like, when you do that too much though, the convenience aspect of the Instant Pot just kind of goes out the window because now it's taking a long time. You have to keep on depressurizing and putting it back and all this kind of stuff. But it's also just fun. You're just like, yo, I did it, check this out. And you only have one pot to wash at the end of, oh, the, yeah, at yeah. The end of your meal. You only have one pot to wash. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's go to the question, the Q and A. Um, Lisa asks, what part of the PI are the recipes from? Yeah, so um, what part of the Philippines are the recipes from? Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, there's six of us and we all come from different parts of the Philippines. And so like arts have Kapampangan. Hard to believe, <laughs> but it's true. My mom's from Pampanga. I'm Filipina from Guam and my mother's from um, Cebu. My father's from Cavite. So we're all from different regions. And so the flavors in the book reflect the different regions that where we're from, as well as the diaspora right. from where we were born and raised. We also integrated um, things that are more modern, like our daughter is allergic to peanuts. And so I really wanted a recipe for one of the Hallmark Filipino dishes, which is kare kare, which is a peanut stew. And I substituted um, the peanut butter for 
um, sunflower, sunflower butter right. plus annatto, annatto powder, which gives it a red uh, color. So um, yeah, different regions, definitely. And um, let's see, there's another question. Was it pretty easy to convert the Filipino recipes for the Instant Pot? No. No. <laughs> I mean, some things, I think adobo is pretty easy to convert. Yeah. Um, certain things where you wouldn't even expect it to start off in a pot, like sisig, right? Like, like that is, um, that's pork that is usually kind of grilled and roasted until crispy and flavored with... Um, calamansi and, and, and different spices. Like for that one, the Instant Pot was used to cook the pork faster, but it doesn't finish in the Instant Pot, right? But for, for all of the stewed ones, it's, it was actually not that, that hard. It was just a matter of figuring out what is the portion that we wanna do for like two, three or four servings that are gonna fit in this six quart thing. Yeah, um, we designed uh, the, our book for a six quart machine and for like two to four servings. So like for say a couple, you would have enough for one meal and then leftovers or lunch the next day. Um, the hardest part, so the stews um, were uh, easier and actually more convenient to cook in the instant pot than in, in your regular pot uh, because you can really, um, uh, braise, boil, and steam meats uh, very easily. That's the beauty of um, moist heat cooking. So, but things uh, like desserts, we had uh, to mm. experiment and mm. throw out a few batches. Uh, all of us working from home with small children, uh, testing, testing and experimenting, um, usually evenings and weekends, uh, getting our, our parents and family members to babysit uh, while we uh, tested these out. Actually, Tanya was asking about the desserts. Maybe you can talk about the desserts that are in the cookbook. Yeah. Um, we have quite a few desserts. So um, the different sections are um, uh, rice and noodles, porridge and soups, poultry, pork, beef, seafood, veggie sweets and miscellaneous, otherwise known as sari sari. So um, we have quite a few desserts. Uh, maybe Art can share some of them. Sure, we have leche flan, cassava cake, bico. Um, so uh, leche flan is like the Spanish or um, the kind you you know get um, from like, um, like Mexican bakeries. Um, bico is a sticky, um, it's usually people just make it in the oven, but it's actually really convenient to do it in the Instant Pot. It's, it's like a sticky rice bar thing with caramel on it. And then puto is like little white, like, like, like rice flour um, num nums. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, yeah our, my favorite is- Oh, the cheesecake? Yeah. Oh, cheesecake. We have um, mango royale cheesecake and ube cheesecake. And a super, super easy uh, thing to make is ginata ang maiz. Oh, that's, that's, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Which Especially, is sweet corn porridge. Yeah, it's so oh, easy wow. to make that. It comes out so yummy and um, it's so comforting. Like you, 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 you cannot mess that up unless you accidentally put vinegar or soy sauce in it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. Say it again. What is that? Biko? Yeah. Obiko is um, caramel, caramelized sticky rice cake. Oh, so wow. I, I believe that's totally vegan. Um, it was my recipe, actually. Um, a lot of our recipes use coconut milk, which you know, is really compatible with paleo, Whole30, um, keto. Everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and vegan and vegetarianism. So great. I've, I've brought Biko to a couple of family parties and I know we're not really having family parties right now, but within your COVID pod or your immediate family, you can easily make uh, some of these desserts. Great. All right. <clears throat> Did we answer the question from uh, Reina? No. Okay. Uh, she has a couple of questions. How does one adjust the chicken adobo recipe for a three quart 
it's in pot. And then she follows up with, let me rephrase my question. Will the Filipino Instant Pot recipe book provide recipes for a three quart Instant Pot? Yeah, so we get that question a lot um, on our in our Facebook group, uh, which is the facebook.com slash group slash Filipino Instant Pot Recipes. And if you join the group, there's a search function and you just put three quart and you will see all of the questions and comments based on the three quart. But the rule of thumb is that you would just have any of the ingredients um, and keep the same cooking time, but make just make sure you have the minimum amount of liquid necessary for your machine. So I believe for the three quart, the minimum amount of liquid at, at all times is a half a cup. For, and then the, for the six quart, minimally one cup of liquid and for the eight quart two cups of liquid this is all like instapot ease but <laughs> meaning like language that once you start using the instant pot you will see uh, why there is um a minimum amount of liquid needed because it needs the the liquid to build steam which creates the right. cooking yeah. yeah if you don't have enough liquid you're you're gonna often get what's called a burn signal and what that means is you're going to actually have food that overcooks at the bottom and scorches and sticks to the um, metal pot. But if you have enough liquid, then that, that won't happen. And I've learned a lot through trial and error. If you ever get a burn signal, not, not all is lost. You really can just take, um, you know, a cookie, like a wooden ladle or something and scrape the food that's collecting on the bottom and maybe add a little water or liquid and then reset the machine and usually it'll it'll cook again um so um there's some wiggle room um try not to get overly perfectionistic because it there is a learning curve when you're learning this new device uh -huh. mm -hmm. so rose is asking um how do you cook sago in the instant pot yeah. Sago. Yeah. So sago is otherwise known as tapioca balls. Oh. Um, there's been very uh, dynamic discussion in the Instant Pot group about this. Um, there's different types of sago uh, that there's like the, um, what do you call pearls. it? The instant, the instant pearls that actually only take like a couple minutes with regular boiling. So do not pressure cook those. Um, uh, I would say definitely join our group and re and search all of the comments and so go because uh, people have overly pressurized it, overly boiled, and you just get this pot glue. of glue. Glue. <laughs> glue. It's yeah. essentially glue. So, um, but I've I have seen it done, and and our our co-author Tisha has perfected the sago, so it is possible. I, I, we do have a recipe um, called Bilo Bilo, which is ginataang um, Bilo Bilo, glutinous rice balls in coconut milk. And um, it does call for mini sago. And I believe I had folks put it in at the end um, mm. or at least on the top so that it, it, it'll uh, soak in the coconut milk. Um, yeah. Great. Um, over on the chat, Corazon asks, um, uh, I must wait. I just started using my pot. How do you clean the air fryer top? The air fryer? I don't oh, know. I think that might have been a mistype, but I, I think. Corazon, do you have the air fryer combination one? Sounds like it. Yeah, okay. you can buy a lid that is an air fryer. Yeah, so our book is not based on the air fryer, but many folks in our uh, Facebook community do have the air fryer, including many of our authors. We actually have an air fryer, but I've only used it once. <laughs> I, uh, I just haven't had time to um, experiment with it. Also, Art's really into grilling right now, so we've been grilling a lot of things outside. Um, yeah, I just throw everything under the broiler in the oven anyway, so. Yeah, I would just um, probably research that on the internet of how to clean um, the air fryer. Yeah, sorry, we don't know that one. <laughs> Great. Uh, Lynn asks about lumpia filling. Um, 
you know, lip your filling, it's not necessary that you uh, pressurize that. So, but um, we have seen it, uh, you can saute in the Instant Pot, but it's um, not the best machine if you're just wanting to saute because it's so tight, there's not enough air yeah. flow. Well, plus you gotta put your arm in like this and go like that to stir it around. But if it's on the, the stove, it's just more natural, you know, so. So I, I recommend that if you're going to do something where you know it's just a saute, you don't need to use your Instant Pot, you know, unless, unless you don't have a stove or something, right? Um, yeah, it's, uh, but it's, it's convenient for the Instant Pot if you start off with a saute and then you boil it to start it off in there because then you just close the lid, right? We do have a recipe on page 96 called picadillo, which is ground beef hash with potatoes, carrots, and peas. It's a great dish. Um, you can make it with or without um, uh, the tomato base. Uh, some folks have put their picadillo, the finished product, into other things like empanada or lumpia, things like that. Um, but not, not the one with the sauce. I, I don't think you would put that in the lumpia. Depends what kind of lumpia as well. Uh, fresh lumpia versus fried lumpia. But I, I would say that lumpia is not the best to be cooked in the Instant Pot. And the Instant Pot should not be used for deep frying. Mm. Good tip. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good thing I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, Mildred has a question. Um, do you switch out the silicon rings when you Instant Pot desserts? My ring tends to take on the aroma of the food yeah. cooking. Um, using baking soda is supposed to neutralize the smell. Yeah, well, you, you seem like an expert. To be honest, I was doing that, but then I just kind of got tired. And I haven't noticed that when I use my savory ring with my desserts that it impacts the flavor. But sorry to disagree or not give, <laughs> but just to, to give another perspective is, uh, it, you know, those rings aren't that expensive. You might as well just buy a bunch of them on Amazon so that you don't, because what happened to us is I think I might have just used the dessert ring to make something stinky and then I just screwed it up, right? So like just just have enough rings so you could have a dessert ring and then you'll 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 be like, hey, there's no way that this cheesecake is gonna taste like adobo today. Impossible. Also, you can get different colors, like um, different colors of rings so that you can more easily identify what they're for. Oh yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah, so like use a, another one that's only for like the, the savory stuff. Yeah, Tanya got a four pack for less than ten dollars. Wow, what a deal! Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Great. Um, Perry and Rana asked similar questions. Uh, what are some of your other favorites in this cookbook? Some of your favorite uh, recipes. Um, I I actually really like the the, the pork hamonado um that's like pork cooked in a pineapple syrup mm -hmm. that's pretty pretty awesome um and i just like sisig so i like yeah and then and then if 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 you like dinner go on it i i liked it i mean i i made it so <laughs> <laughs> and for those who are not familiar um let me read you the the sisig is crispy minced pork and Dinaguan is pork blood stew. So there are a number of cultures that use blood uh, to, uh, to cook things, um, including European cultures as well. And so uh, Filipinos also have that and Art is a big fan. Yeah, it's really good for iron deficiency. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> um, are you planning a sequel to the Filipino Instant Pot Cookbook? It's definitely uh, been, been asked and, um, you know, it's definitely on our mind. Nothing immediate, but someday in the future. Okay. You can find a lot of great recipes in that Facebook group as well. Mm -hmm. if yeah. There's stuff in there. Some of my favorite recipes from the book are, um, we have a coconut milk adobo, page 59, uh, page 70, sinigang, which is a tamarind, like a sweet and sour soup. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned before, the Ginataang Ma'is, the sweet corn porridge. Um, I, 
I was really drawn to the Instant Pot when I was pregnant and I wanted to uh, make a lot of bone broths to replenish my body and to help my body uh, la lactate, or, lactate or make breast milk. And then we also introduced our baby to her first foods using the Instant Pot. Mm. So we would just cook a bunch of food, especially with like um, pumpkin and greens and stuff and rice and I would just freeze little portions. And so I, I, we pretty much exclusively made all our baby food in the Instant Pot. Oh, cool. Uh, George asks in the chat um, how to join the Facebook, I guess, group. Yeah, I've, I've put it earlier. I will uh, I'll repost that in the chat. I think here's the link. I think I found Okay, it. thank you. Great. Um, and I think we just have one last question in the QA, and um, we're doing great with time. Um, where did you learn to cook and how did you get into cooking? Oh, um, well, I learned to cook from my mom and um, my grandmother on the Filipino side, obviously. <laughs> and um, I have an uncle that um, he's really made, he was great at, he's great at making sisig and dimaguan and different kapampang and stuff. So he really inspired me that I could, you know, like, even though I wasn't um, a woman, I could, I could totally get into cooking. And, um, you know, it's funny in the beginning, I was actually, I didn't want to join the group of cooks because I was like, like, I don't want to make Filipino food in an instant pot. Like I want to make it the traditional way. Right. And, and then I was along because I'm a graphic designer. So I actually did the layout for the book along with, um, another woman, um, Diane. But as we were kind of just having these Zoom meetings and talking about recipes, and then everyone's like, wait, what are we gonna cook? What are we gonna cook? And then I was like, well, where's your dinaguan at, guys? Like, where is this? Where is that? And then then after like, Art, you just wanna do that one? I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then I started cooking with it. I was like, yo, this is awesome. Because it cuts the time down like crazy. Like a lot of, you know, back to my favorite blood stew, like it's not just like happy things in there like like blood, there's also tripe and there can be other organs that take a really long time to boil until they're tender. Mm -hmm. But when you use the Instant Pot, you cut the time down by like a third or, or like, I mean, it takes a third of the time or a quarter of the time and your house isn't just smelling like, like, like boiled organs and stuff, right? So it's, it's, um, I was like, yo, this thing is awesome, actually. And then I started to kind of be like, I, I joined the cult, you know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Jeannie, what about you? Oh, what was the question? About how'd you learn how to cook or why did you start cooking or all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, I grew up in, I, I was born in Guam and was raised around my mother's side mostly. Um, uh, because my mother's the oldest of seven and, and my dad's the um, seven of eight. But um, on my mother's side, my grandfather was um, had, grew a lot of vegetables and he had some animals in the backyard as well. And so it was always around cooking. Um, we moved to Vallejo, California when I was six years old and um, spent a lot of time uh, in the kitchen with my mom and especially one of my aunts on my dad's side, um, Auntie mm -hmm. Julie and um, just observed their cooking style. Um, and, but when we were adapting the recipes for the book, um, we definitely referred to our relatives and asked them and had them taste tests and to get our elders approval of like the texture and the flavor and the color <laughs> was the ultimate sign of, okay, we're good to go. And my joke with my mother-in-law was when I had her taste test um, sauce for our pancit uh, palabok, and she came up and her face was covered with the sauce. And I was like, okay, I guess it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know why, but my mom likes her cooking in the Instant Pot better than mine. I would just be like, Arr, Arr, you didn't like this, this is good. Arr. And then Jenny would bring herself in and she'd go, oh, this is good, good, I like it. So I don't know, but there it is. Perry says elder approval can sometimes be challenging. 
Yeah, definitely. They're, they're the most critical for sure. For the most part. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a fun event. Uh, it's been such a pleasure hosting you both and uh, being able to introduce you uh, to some more people. Thank you. Thank you, yes. thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. We're so appreciative to the Berkeley Public Library, the Friends and Foundation of the Berkeley, Berkeley Public Library, the Charlie Cart, um, and the Tool Lending Library that is going to make the uh, pots accessible to the public. So thank yeah. you so much for having us. Thanks. Yeah, this February, you'll be able to get the Instant Pot 8-Quart Duo Nova from the library. Wow. Nice. We'll have to borrow it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.